Welcome to Modern Musings, conversations with the maiden, mother, and crone. Looking at ourselves and the world through the lens of the 21st century. Hello, and welcome back. I'm your hostess, Kristen, and I'm here with my co-hosts, Amber and Cindy. Hi! Hi. Welcome back, everybody. Thanks for coming back to listen to us again on another beautiful Wednesday. We're glad to have you here. If it's your first time, um, thanks for joining us. If it's your second time or you keep coming back, then thanks and welcome back again. We really appreciate that. Yes. Yes. So we are in the, like, last couple of weeks, I guess, here in September. Um, Yep, last half of the mm -hmm. month. Yeah. So season's changing, right? And um, we're jumping into fall. And um, one of the topics that we had, you know, pondered discussing was um, produce and season. And so we're actually like right on the end of two seasons. seasons. So we're at the end of summer produce and we're jumping into fall. So, you know, like uh, pumpkin spice lattes, here we come kind of thing, you know. Yum, yum, yum. Obviously, like, it's pumpkin season now. Um, But uh, I wanted to just kind of, like, talk about that because, you know, we do a lot of home-cooked meals, and we've talked about, um, you know, doing things on a budget, and and, um, I know we just kind of briefly talked about cooking with fresh produce in the past, and um, this is something that's kind of regional depending on where you live obviously um i know we have quite a few listeners here in texas and then we have listeners from all over so you know some of this might only be relevant to texas but you can kind of take it and run with it for your own personal life um and obviously you know chime in on on our um MMC chat on Facebook and let us know about, you know, the produce in your area. Um, But we wanted to talk about, you know, produce in season. So right now with it being, um, you know, wrapping up summer and heading into fall, um, you know, what is the produce that's in season right now? So with, with summer, you know, ending, you know, we had a lot of delicious fruit this summer, that was in season. Like I love uh, summertime because that's when peaches and plums oh, and apricots and cherries, and berries, and watermelons. It's like fruit, fruit, fruit. You know. Um, and then when you come into fall, you're looking at things like pumpkins and apples acorn squash. and pears. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, and that's yeah. actually what's in season right now. So um, for late September, apples, um, pears. Uh, corn is kind of winding down uh, its season. Uh, figs are in season here in Texas. Um, Russell sprouts. Yeah, grapes are actually in season. Love figs. Like oh, yeah. end of end of summer, mm-hmm. like the fig trees are in bloom. And they uh, they have. Oh, I'm trying to think what else is a really good one that I like. Okra. Okra and squashes, lots mm-hmm. of squashes. Yeah, too. squashes are starting to come into season, uh, along you know with, with the pumpkins and stuff like that. Sweet potatoes, mm-hmm. peanuts, peanuts yeah. are in season. Yeah, th- it's this uh, this time of year. Peanuts, turnips. Are you fans of turnips? I have never had anything with turnips that I can think of. I'm not a huge I fan. Except for like turnip greens. Green, yeah, turnip greens. That's what I was yeah. going to say. Yeah, I have had turnip greens. I have had <clears throat> like sautéed turnips before, but I can't some really people, say that. Some people put turnips, actual chopped up turnips in their turnip greens, like little chunks of them. Mm-hmm. And um, and some people mash them like like mashed potatoes. Huh. Um, parsnips. I think parsnips are another thing. And people um, mash those, I think. I have not had them. I I don't know. I don't know if that's more of a northern, you know, because those root vegetables tend to. Yeah, I think I've only ever really had turnips once in my life other than turnip greens. Hmm. I don't know. Some of that stuff is like, because it's only available a certain time of year, you kind of have to like leap on it and like already have a recipe in place. Right. right. Well, and that's why I say that, like, I, I, I don't really feel... Well, I know the turnips and turnip greens obviously are are southern often, mm-hmm. um, but I don't know about parsnips. I really don't know a lot of people that eat parsnips. So, 
I don't, that's why I was saying, I don't know if that's a northern thing. Artichokes are another thing that are coming into season. So, um, yeah, and those are yeah. fun, yummy. Um, we actually did that with the kids. Most of the time I run into artichokes. It's the artichoke hearts. In the can. And, you know, we buy them in the can and we put them in our salads or on our pizza or whatever. Um, or on a pasta. But, um, I, I thought it would be fun one time to buy some, they were, you know, in season. And so I bought some, um, fresh artichokes and we, um, steamed them and then ate them with a little aioli yeah you made a little dip and i remember we just like kind of like ate you just, them off like a spoon. yeah you bite yeah. them and squish the bite the leaf and squeeze it between your teeth so that it just mm-hmm. kind of yeah, comes it's out in your mouth definitely a chore to eat those they are but they're fun but it's yeah. fun and they do taste good you know mm-hmm. i want to say i've only done that twice in my life but yeah, yeah me I too probably being like a chore yeah, i'm weird really i either. just like them right out of the can uh, the can <laughs> ones are pretty good. like yeah literally just open a or can the jar or whatever <laughs> yep. or, or go to the olive bar like say at whole foods or sprouts or something mm-hmm. like that and just get oh the yeah, yeah get some yeah. right there yeah. yeah they're marinated and yummy. yeah I, i'm looking at i have this list that i pinned on my pinterest board um, and it, it's called the bountiful year, a guide to seasonal fruits and vegetables. And it's a whole list that gives things, um, by season and, and it's like a little chart and all of the, the, the seasons are across the top, like columns for mm, seasons. So you can see how long corn is. Available. And then you, and down the side is or, all of the veg. It, it's broken cool. out into fruits and vegetables and, um, you can see like strawberries run, from March to October through October. Um, and then, and then you can see that, um, like grapes are really only July through November. Is it regional though? Because, uh, I don't know. I don't know what region that is in. Um, I think they're just talking about availability in stores or whatever, Mm -hmm. because, and this actually gives them in season and then, uh, then there's a shaded part that says available, but not in season. Mm-hmm. And that means that they're, you know, like the tail end of the season, or maybe they're coming from another place or whatever. Okay. So they're yeah, going to be more like expensive. Strawberries in December are gross. Right. Like, oh, yeah. Just and they're, and they're usually coming from somewhere else. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, you know, like we get a lot of our, our winter fruit, the winter fruit or the summer fruits that are not in season here in the winter come from Chile and, and stuff like that. So we get a lot of, mm-hmm. a lot of fruits and vegetables yeah. from, from South America. Um, so they're not in season. You can buy them, but they're not in season. So they're more expensive because they have to transport them here. Buying, buying what is in season currently is much less expensive and usually, tastes a lot better right so that's why i was gonna say because like, what they're are some fresh of the benefits they're so really exactly... fresh they've come right out of the crops they're they're getting to you quicker they're gonna last longer they're gonna last fridge. longer and um and then the because they're in season where you are locally they are um they they're just more delicious they are um and a lot of times you know you can tell by what's in season by going to your local farmer's market or whatever because and because of what's on sale at the supermarket because the the further out of season it is the more expensive th- that produce is going to be when it's in season is when it's on sale basically because they want you to buy it before it goes bad it's it's really good you know right then it's really fresh and really ripe I love when, you know, you were talking about things in the winter that are on sale. I love Anjou pears. It's the only kind of pear that I like to eat raw. Um, they're, you, uh, a lot of people think you, you buy them and, and they should squeeze or be soft, um, cause they feel hard, but they're, they're actually not as hard as you think they are, but, oh, they are the sweetest pears ever. And they are far superior to the, like the Bartlett's and, and some of the other pears that you get because they're so juicy and sweet. And I love getting those in the winter when they're in season. One of the other things to consider too, like eating 
uh, in season is um, purchasing locally grown foods. Right. Uh, it supports your local farms. Right. And, you know, you're Farmers talking market. about, you know, getting those strawberries from Chile and the impact that it has on um, the uh, environment. Just right. To, that, transport to transport those. those. Yes. We're, to... we're expending a lot of energy, leaving a large carbon footprint. So, and, and we try to do that here locally. I mean, with some of our vegetables, uh, not so much maybe because, you know, we want to have our celery or our Brussels sprouts or whatever, whenever we want them. But particularly with the fruit, um, I try to buy only what's in season and, um, it just because the quality of it is better and, and it is, it's, it's really, um, kinder to our environment to buy them in season. Do you have any, any favorites that you look for in, um, any of those, any of the seasons? Like I, um, I remember getting oranges a lot when I was a kid. Um, and you know, they're in season pretty much all year round because we have California and we have Florida mm -hmm. and stuff. But, um, when I was a kid, I remember getting oranges at Christmas. That was always a, a common thing was to have oranges around at Christmas time. Mm -hmm. Um, and grapefruits, we would get grapefruit a lot. Um, because grapefruit is in season from December until April. And so mm -hmm. it's actually a winter food. And, and it lasts pretty long time. And it lasts time. a long time. Um, I remember when uh, Krista was in Girl Scouts, we were uh, learning about food and nutrition in our Girl Scout troop. And the girls had to make some meals and stuff. And one of the things that healthy meals, healthy meals. And um, one of the things that we did was make a big salad uh kind of like a build your own salad bar kind of thing uh for one of the for the whole troop and we brought all these different things that you could put in salads um hopefully to get the girls to try some different things you know so like we had uh you know most people think of their salad and they think okay some lettuce and maybe uh some black olives and some croutons you know or whatever and we brought, we had them bring all these different things that you could put in a salad, like the, the green, fresh green peas and jicama sticks. And, um, and one of the things I remember, uh, the other Girl Scout leader talking about was that in their family, um, traditionally they only ate tomatoes in the summer when the tomatoes are in season. And then in the, in the winter, when the tomatoes are no longer in season, they would put grapefruit slices, grapefruit sections on their salads. And that was, that was what they used. And, you know, like a lot of people like their mandarin oranges on their salads as mm -hmm. well, or apples. Or pears. Um, yeah. And so, um, that was what they, they actually used grapefruit slices. And I thought that was really interesting. And, you know, I had never thought of that because you think of a tomato, you think of salad, you think tomato, but. Tomatoes are not in season in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. So you're either buying some kind of hothouse tomato or something that's really expensive and probably not as good. Yeah. Um, we always look forward to the summertime um, for corn on the cob. Oh, Travis yeah. Travis found some recipe with like grilled, it was like called grilled street corn. And so you, it took six corns on the cob. And you did uh, six of them with the husk and six without on the grill so that some of them were more charred than others. Uh -huh. And then you mixed it with like Parmesan cheese and I think it was sour cream and some other things to give it like that street corn kind of flavor. Is that the one like... that you brought to our yes. house? Oh yes. my God, that was so, so delicious, good. right? Yeah, and it had, um, it was a Food Network recipe. You need um, to link that. Oh yeah, absolutely. And uh, it has um, cilantro and stuff in it. And yeah, we it's kind of like elotes. But yeah, yeah, yeah. We eat that quite a few times in the summertime. Um, and we'll also have corn on the cob as well. I but love we corn on the cob. We only eat in that the in the summertime because yeah. corn's really not like something you should eat all the time. So yeah. it's not a vegetable. Just it's a it. grain. And it's... Yeah, we only eat it during the summertime yeah. and we just get it fresh yeah. and try just to avoid, you know, canned corn and stuff. So that's the that's one of the things that I look forward to. And cherries. 
Oh, yeah. You know, I was talking about Brussels sprouts. I love fresh Brussels sprouts in, in the winter. Mm-hmm. You know, they're they're a winter food. So we often have them at like um, Christmas, dinner, Christmas or Thanksgiving or, you know, something something like that. And um, one of my favorite things we learned to do with those. I have several recipes. I have some that are that have like bacon and onions and shallots and stuff in them and one that's like really creamy with a lot of Parmesan cheese. But my actual favorite way to have them is to just roast them in the oven with a little bit of oil on them and salt and pepper. And then about five minutes before they're done, douse them with a little bit of soy sauce and stick them back in there. And they get so crispy and delicious. Even my dog eats them and my dog hates vegetables. So, (laughs) (laughs) but they are so good. So, so good. And I like, uh, like you're talking about the summer, I look forward to nectarines and cherries and sometimes blueberries too, but mostly nectarines and cherries. Those are my favorite summer, summer fruits. I like, I like the melons and stuff like that, but I don't know. The pit fruits are just, those are my favorites. What about you, Amber? I get to talk. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> you got to speak up. <laughs> um, honest, uh, like, uh, I, when Kristen asked a question, like, I don't know, forgot what the question was, and <laughs> I had something in mind, and then I forgot about it, and then. You got to speak up. Now I can't remember. <laughs> um, I guess the one th- thing that I look forward to in season would be avocado that's uh you know like it's it's weird I was just sitting here thinking y'all were talking about fruits and stuff like that I was just sitting here thinking like um you know in my mind because for so long after you have bariatric surgery it's like protein 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 get your protein and it's like fruits don't really have protein true that so it's just like uh you put fruits off for so long because you're trying to get your protein that fruits don't really have like the same effect on me like are they like I don't really crave them anymore if that makes sense yeah like uh not even I don't even crave the flavors like we were talking about like water and like people putting the flavors in the water and stuff like that, the fruity flavors. And I don't really even like crave that anymore. The only thing that like I really like as far as fruits are concerned is avocado. Yeah. Cause, um, but don't you still have to consume like fruits and vegetables for your, for the fiber? Well, sure. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I should. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, but yeah. I should. <laughs> now, you know, okay. So occasionally the only fruit, and when it's in season, it really like makes me happy. And I see it in the stores all cut up and ready. The one thing that I just have to buy when I see it fresh in the stores is dragon fruit. Oh. I used to be that way about kiwis. I mean, I guess I still might be. But, you know, certain times a year when dragon fruit is rampant, like a Tom Thumb will cut it up and do like a freshly oh, yeah. chopped uh-huh. dragon fruit bowls or whatever yeah, they'll and mix it I, with some other things, yeah, yeah i buy that up like i get the one that has the most dragon fruit in it <laughs> and uh yeah that, that's the only thing that like when i see it like in store that that's the only thing that makes me really excited and of course all the time avocados make me excited i love avocados so much um i want to say like uh the one fruit i remember That holds a special childhood memory. Well, two different fruits. But one would be picking apricots from my mom's apricot tree. I love fresh apricots, too. My mom had a prized apricot tree in our backyard that she, it was her baby. She took care of that thing. She loved apricots. We had a peach tree, like two peach trees and a plum tree also. But she was all about that apricot tree. And I remember picking the apricots, 
in season eating fresh from the tree apricots. Mm, yeah. And that's like a fond childhood memory. And then every time cherries were in season, my mom had to have cherries. And there were cherries, cherry everything whenever oh, cherries, cherries were in the season. Cherries, cherries, mm-hmm. yum, yum. Yep, I do love my cherries because they're just... I, I mean, I love them, too. Them. Well, they're, don't they're full them. of ax- antioxidants, too. They're really good for I mean, for I you. do love fresh fruit. I just uh, don't, and I should, but I just don't seek it out anymore. Like, I'm never, I never just like, hey, I'm going to sit down with some fruit. It's more like um, I'm going to sit down with an avocado or... I'm going to sit down with like some kind of something that has protein in it, you know? Yeah. Mainly because I just don't get I, enough. I protein. try, I try, I do, I eat the fruit, uh, a lot because it is, um, a low fat snack because I, I try not to get as much fat, you know? So it, it's, and it, it has carbs, but they're but they're better carbs. They're not the you know the the carbs that. No, I try to get the berry carbs. You know, like strawberry, blueberry, yeah. blackberry, because those have the least berry carbs. Right, berry fruit. Cherry, cherries yeah, are cherries least... fall into that category as well. Even <laughs> oh, though they're sugar. cherries are a stone fruit, but they yeah. fall into that category because they're lower glycemic than. Um, so you can Grapes have quite a bit of them. And bananas, yeah. Bananas are really high. You know, I was just looking at this list. So this must be, uh, you know, U.S. based because bananas are not on here. Neither is pineapple. And both of those are tropical fruits. Um, And so they're not on this list at all whatsoever. Right. Because even though pineapples, you know. Well, they grow in the U.S. They grow in Hawaii. Hawaii but right, but it's not in the it's not a, mainland. Yeah. So. They still so have, they to have to ship them. Transport them, yeah. yeah, which is crazy. So I love, I yeah. do. Going back to that, I love the pineapples too. Oh, those are so good. But um, yeah. So I was looking at a website that I decided would be a good thing to bookmark, and it's kind of like what you were talking about. You can look at um, how long they're in season, they're in uh-huh. season and stuff. Um, it's called seasonalfoodguide.org, and they also have an app. That you can get on uh, oh, your that's phone, cool. and actually, like looking at their website is pretty basic. The app actually looks a little bit cooler than the website because, like, when you look at going towards Apple, apps now. yeah, whenever you look at an Apple, it has like a like kind of a circle of the year, and it shows what months instead of on the website i had to click texas and then i had to go click on what season we're in right uh now um but the app knows what mm -hmm. what location because it probably has location and it may do the same thing too but i think it gave a little bit more intuitive oh okay examples of like Uh on the website it's like just a list of fruits and then vegetables and then you had to go click each one to look at it okay um but they also had like links to recipes so you know if you saw chamoya which is in season right now i have no idea what to do with that but i could click on it and there's it's going to take me to a bunch of different recipes and uh how to prepare the food and interesting stuff so it's pretty cool um I don't know. I uh, I think about that kind of stuff a lot because Travis and I do all the cooking at home, and I'm always trying to reduce waste and you know food waste and money monetary waste by buying things in season. Because sometimes you know you buy a pint of strawberries out of season, and then you're like, blech, and then they go bad, right? What a right. waste! Yeah. So buying in season. And um, just being ready for it because if you're not ready um, mentally prepared to make, you know, squash foods, you know, right. this time of year, you know, <laughs> you uh, you miss out on the opportunity. Right, right. Um, so, like, whenever pumpkins go on sale, I like to get a pumpkin and then... And cook prepare it. it and then freeze and it freeze and whatever. That. Yeah. yeah. Well, and and we did that one year, um, you know, like the uh, everybody's familiar. Well, a lot of people are familiar with the Hatch Chili Festival. So the Hatch green chilies um, become 
uh, in season at a, a very specific time. Um, I believe it's in August, the first few weeks of August or something like that. And, um, and so we've gone and bought the chilies and roasted them ourselves and, and shucked them, peeled them, whatever, you know, take the skin off and froze them, you know, to have fresh chilies whenever we want year round, because those, those chilies are, um, superior, I think, you know, and, and yes, I could buy an Anaheim pepper. It's the same pepper just grown in different dirt. Um, but the, the change of the soil in that, in those two regions makes the chilies taste a little different. And, and we, we've grown up with the green chilies from, you know, like the hatch area. And so that's what we're most familiar with. And, and so that's what we prefer over the, over the Anaheim. Now, if you live in the Anaheim area and you've gotten used to eating Anaheim peppers, then yeah. And, and I've noticed a, a really funny thing, uh, when, cause we buy the HelloFresh, which I've mentioned before, um, they don't tell you what region they're from because they get them from wherever they're in season at the moment. And so when they put their chilies on the menu, they just call them long green peppers. Because they're You're basically right. sometimes they're it's all, a serrano. No, right? they're not, not serranos. Serranos. Because if they have serranos, they use serranos and okay. they've used poblanos. Oh, but right, if right, it's right. but if it's a green chili It's either hatchers or they we don't know. Anything. They just call it a long green pepper because Sorry. it's the same pepper grown in different regions, but they call it an Anaheim pepper or they call it a, a hatch chili pepper or whatever. Um, we actually looked that up <laughs> and, and found out the interesting, you know, history behind the Anaheims and the green chilies and, you know, mm. what's the difference between them? The difference is where they're grown. That's people it. People are serious about their hatch green chilies. Oh, yes, they are. Too. They're very good. <laughs> so, um, anything that you guys are looking forward to, um, this coming season besides, Obviously, uh, Brussels sprouts, <laughs> pomegranates, mm-hmm. beets. Oh, oh beets! Oh. Love beets. See, and I'm Have not. A, I'm beet not a huge eggs? fan of beets. Beet eggs. Yes. No, Do you like boiled eggs? Yeah, I like boiled eggs. So you take well, this is pickled beets or canned beets, but you basically boil eggs, peel them, and then put them with the beets in the oh, okay and can them jar them but you can i don't jar i don't can them for the pantry i just do the quick canning quick pickling yeah for the fridge so they only last for a few days but um my friend's husband is from pennsylvania and he said beet eggs you gotta have them and so i tried them and i made him some and it was pretty good so just put them in the beet juice Uh uh-huh or can them with beets yeah both yeah so it's like a jar with boiled eggs and beets and juice. Boiled and eggs they, and they beets. They soak up the beet juice and then you eat them. It's pretty good. I mean, I wouldn't eat them all the time, but hmm. it was fun. I do love beets in my salad. That is one. That is one thing that I do love. Now, so I mean, I'll buy fresh beets occasionally, but um, I do love the pickled beets and then the beets. In the salad, like mm-hmm. the soft beets. I'm not. A, I'm not a huge fan. I liked pickled They're beets when I was a tasty. kid, but yeah. I, I don't know. I I had some more recently, and I was just like, eh. I like the sweet ones, not yeah. the plain ones. That's yeah. probably what the difference was, because the ones like you get at the salad bar are mm-hmm. not. Yeah, they're usually plain. They're plain, and, yeah. and it's kind of weird because beets actually are sweet because. Beets They're are one sugar. of the the things that they use to make sugar. Um, right. Yeah. You're right. Beet it's, sugar. In a in a in addition to sugar cane, they make beet sugar out of beets. So um it it just kind of surprised me that it wasn't sweet. So hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Um you talked about things that are coming in season. Um asparagus. Asparagus is <gasps> another time. one. Wintertime. Yes. Yes. yes, that's yes. another good thing. I do like thing. it whenever it goes on the cheap because then I can yes. eat it without Yeah, I, like I well, and then you get the fresher ones that are in the winter. Yeah. You get the fresher ones that are the smaller stalks. They aren't as woody. They're not as yeah. woody, so yeah, I like those. And then that's one thing that I like to get at the farmers market is the fresh asparagus. Fresh asparagus, yeah. 
You do like your little farmer's market. I love, <laughs> like, I would rather buy vegetables at a farmer's market than I would mm -hmm. just at, like, Kroger, you know, just a regular grocery store. It's really funny because when I was a kid. Same with fruits. You know, that we'd always buy from roadside stands. Um, we didn't have a farmer's market, per se, where I grew up, uh, that I know of. Um, but there was always roadside stands with fresh melons and potatoes and onions mm -hmm. and tomatoes. That's another, and, potatoes and tomatoes, another good thing to get at the farmer's yeah. market. And, um, and the quality was always superior. Garlic. I, I tell you a summer thing that I miss seeing, and I don't know what the deal is, but when I was growing up, you had two kinds of watermelon. You had red, around, red watermelons, and you had yellow watermelons i have not seen a yellow watermelon in you're right 20 or more years is and it because we moved to west i mean i don't Central, know west, north, i west, really whatever. don't know but i used to get wa yellow watermelons all the time i loved yellow watermelons i now somebody told me that they taste the same they're just different colors i don't know about that but we always had both kinds because different people in the family like different ones. Mm -hmm. And so we had the yellow ones and the red ones. Now, all you seem to get is the red ones and they're always the same. Uh, well, there's two different ones that you can get at the grocery store here. You get the little personal ones, personal size ones, which are really small. <laughs> personal size. The ball That's what they ones. call them. They're like a little yeah. ball. And, and they're really small and they have a really dark green skin on them. And then they have the big humongous watermelons that are kind of stripy colored mm -hmm. and they're the red ones, but they, to me, do not have any flavor. They're very flavorless. They're not very sweet. No. They're not very sweet. Um, and I don't know if that's just from factory farming um, or what, because we always had, we grew them or we bought them at the roadside stands or whatever. And so that mm -hmm. was a big difference. Um it could also be the time of the year, too. So watermelons go into season, like, they're available in the store early in the summer, but they're also still in season right now. So yeah. Um, yeah. if you're buying them in June, they're probably not going to taste as good as well, the Well, they're probably, probably July, August mm -hmm. kind of time period is when I'm thinking they're at their peak, you know, because... That's when people are eating them, too. You know, they're going to be picking most of them. They'll leave some to grow so that they have more later on in the season. But, yeah. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting. Well, I'd love to hear from our listeners on, uh, you know, what uh, produce in season that you look forward to. What did we miss? I mean, we totally just skipped spring altogether, but <laughs> it's so far away from us right now. Um, but I'd love to hear what you guys uh, have in plans for produce in season do you shop produce in season do you um plan for it ahead of time so that you can can or jar or uh freeze and um you know let us know what you guys think um what are we talking about next week next week we are talking about elder care and caregivers oh. um and this is something i've mentioned many times um that i have unfortunately some experience with this so um i i want to kind of talk it, it'll probably turn into a rant it, it, gauging how i feel about things right now but um <laughs> i don't know um it, it it'll be interesting i hope um so that's what we're talking about next week okay sounds good well we want to thank cake mix and creative audio tech for our recording equipment and our music and we'd also like to thank our loyal listeners. So thank you again for coming by week by week and uh, listening to us blab about whatever random topic that ah, we're blabbing ah, about ah. for the week, you know, topic of the week. Um, definitely share with your friends. Let them know about us. And, um, you know, let us know what you liked, what you didn't like. We'd like to hear from you. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.